show stopping sound effect. Wow, hey everybody, we're gonna start this show. Wow, what an amazing event. What is your life? This moment is the cheers. It's unbelievable that this show is starting, everyone. All right, hello, welcome to Comedy for Home Sweet Home, the only open mic comedy show where guys are throwing darts in the middle of the sets. Let's go. It's absolutely not distracting at all or a liability for the bar's insurance. It's totally chill. Uh, I, I, I feel you. Uh, look, when I'm done, I, you know, I don't give a shit. You can disrespect me, just don't disrespect the comics. That's literally the only nice thing I'm going to say about anyone performing tonight. Uh, all right. This is Comedy for Hosting Home. This is Comedy Open Mic. Has anyone here been to an open mic before? Anyone new to an open mic? You're new to an open mic? All right, you're gonna have mixed feelings about it. It's really an experience. It's, uh, it's a lot of people coming up to try stuff, various levels of skill, trying out new stuff. Some hacks just do stuff they've been doing for five years straight. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, I always tell everybody the best way to enjoy this is to live in the chaos, to ride the chaos, experience it, and realize that everything you're watching on stage is like, what the fuck is this? That's what all the performers are thinking too. We don't know half of these people. That's the fun of an open mic. You guys are all here to see Steve, right? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Right. I like that you seem confused, but everybody else was like, yes. This is my first open mic. So. You're just here to see whoever's here? Yes. All right, I like that. You're the best. Thanks, man. And when you are when you leave in three comics, I will take it personally. Um, all right, all of Steve's friends, thank you for coming out. Just a bit of advice for you, right? Steve is joining a new community. He's trying to make friends in new communities. So when Steve is done, if all 16 of you get up and leave immediately as soon as he's done, all anyone in the community is going to think is, wow, Steve's friends are dicks. <laughs> so you got to give it at least two, and then you can go, okay? Just two people. It's ten minutes after Steve. All good? Wait here till the end. Oh, all right. Great. Me too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, This is. I love this. This is an open forum. What's up? Who's Steve? Steve is this guy right here. I see. Yeah. I don't know Steve either. I'm just meeting Steve for the first time. Uh, Steve did ask me, said before the show started, he said, how do you feel about race jokes? And I said, I love them. So get ready for that. <laughs> Steve hates other races. I better write one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're gonna we're gonna move along. Uh, this is a comedy show, I do appreciate it. All the people listen to all the people performing tonight, they like it when you actually laugh. Now, when we look out, we see everyone like smiling and nodding. That feels good at the moment. But everyone records their sets. And when they don't actually hear laughter on their drive home, they drive off the nickel bridge and kill themselves. That's true. We lost two comics this year. It's January 30th. What a year. It's honestly, it's going to be one for the record books. Uh, I do ask that you laugh out loud, and if I ask you to laugh, I also encourage you, if you don't like something, feel free to boo. I encourage booing. And if you really hate something, feel free to hiss. Now, this guy who just looked behind him wildly, I want to make it clear, that is out of order. That bathroom is broken, everybody. Uh, we're working on getting it fixed, but for now, let's give it a break. I'll make a big announcement. Here goes Nathan. Nathan's going to fix the bathroom. Everyone give it up for Nathan. Uh, just no solid shit for the rest of the night, please. Diarrhea and pee only. <laughs> All right. We're going to get this thing moving along. Uh, i got a bunch of great comics tonight. Some of the best comics in the city are here tonight. I don't know why they're here tonight, but they are. So that'll be a lot of fun. But I had to start off with the most pressing thing tonight. You guys see this shit about Taylor Swift on the internet? See this big conspiracy theory about Taylor Swift? They say that Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, this is a deep government psyop. So when the Kansas City Chiefs win the Super Bowl, they could spike the ball, announce they're getting married, and tell everyone to vote for Biden. And then, and then, that's a conspiracy theory, which is a long way for the deep state to fall. When I was a kid, the deep state pulled off 9-11. That's pretty impressive. Hey, way back in the day, they killed the president. They killed Kennedy. Recently, they just gave everyone a COVID shot that turns you trans. <laughs> and now they're making a recent Super Bowl champion team win the Super Bowl again? And making the Tennessee Christian marry the hot football guy? Yes, they do say to set realistic goals, so that's good on them. That's smart planning. I was trying to look it up. I was trying to like figure out more about like what's going on with Taylor Swift and the Kansas City Chiefs. And I looked it up on Twitter during that Ravens game the other night. 
<laughs> I didn't realize Taylor Swift is a big fan of the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't know if you guys were on Twitter, but she was butt naked getting fucked in the stands. Covered in Raiders paint. Or Chiefs paint. And she had three legs. And perfectly pendulous, almost completely copy and pasted nipples. It was incredible. That's only a joke for guys who are married and on their phones during football games. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the Mona Lisa, they, uh, they threw some soup on the Mona Lisa yesterday. Some climate activists threw soap on the Mona Lisa, which is great. Because don't you always look at the picture of the Mona Lisa, and you see that smug little smirk, and you're like, fuck you, bitch, have some soup. <laughs> Not as much as Mona Lisa does. She's been sitting in that frame for 400 years waiting for some soup to come her way. All right. I am six weeks away from having my second kid. Thanks, everybody. Uh, thanks. It's uh, annoying as fuck. Um, we just started trying to potty train my first kid, who's two. We talked about that last week. Apparently, when you potty train now, you do uh, you do underwear and then the pull-up diaper on top of the underwear. That way, when the kid wets himself, he has wet underwear on. So he's like, ah, that sucks. <laughs> My son doesn't give a fuck. He's just like, all right, that's no different than the diaper. You know who cares? Me. You know what sucks worse than cleaning a shitty diaper? Cleaning shitty underwear in the kitchen sink. And still having to change a shitty diaper, too. We actually, uh, we did, we gave up on potty training him. Which is kind of weird, because we will need to do that again. It is weird to quit doing something that I do have to do. I was trying to justify it. My wife's like, yeah, just pretend it's like dieting. Like, you should lose weight, but come on. All right. Great, I thought people would relate to that. You guys are all in shape, so fuck you. Uh, uh, my son just got my, so he just took my, my, we were making the nursery, gave my son, he's got his first big boy bed. And we're trying to get him used to being in there and not in the crib. It's hard to keep him in the bed, right? So what I had to do is I had to go up there and lay in the bed with him so he'll stay. Which is the greatest thing that's ever happened for me. I've taken like 11 naps in the past three days. It's fucking awesome. I would never get away with napping this much. I'm going up there every chance I get. He doesn't even need a nap. I'm just going up there and I'm like, come on, buddy. Wouldn't this be fun? Let's go hang out in your room. But I, I realize now I'm in a quandary, right? Because I'm going to go home tonight. After being here and drinking for several hours, I'm going to come back in around 1.30 in the morning. And it's not a good look if I just stumble into my son's room drunk and crawl in bed with him. I'm like, hey, buddy. What's up? Daddy's home. All right, people are uncomfortable with that. I'm sorry your father's molested you. Um, I wasn't planning on doing that, but it was something I was thinking about uh, not doing, to be clear. God, you guys are tough. Uh, my wife is in her third trimester, which uh, is kind of cool because my wife's finally horny again. And it's also kind of cool because like now my wife is she'll text me in the middle of the day. She's like, when I get home, you know what we're gonna do? And I'm like, yeah. And then she comes home and we do that. And I'm like, yeah. And then as soon as we're done, she's like, and can you move all those boxes up to the attic? So it is like dating all over again, you know? It brought a spark back into our relationship. All right, guys, I'm really not enjoying you. Uh, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I don't even really want to finish this shit. Um, <laughs> I'm rolling through all the offensive jokes I have in my head, and I'm deciding against them all because I realize there's other people who have to come up on the show. Uh, I, like to, um, I like to kiss with my eyes open. Yeah. Pretty cool fetish to have, you know? Because it is impossible to get caught. <laughs> Unless the other person kisses with their eyes open. Thank you. Which is an easy argument to win. Jacob, what are you doing? What am I doing? What are you doing? Looks like I was right to trust my instincts, you sneaky bitch. <laughs> I, uh, I always ask this. I like that. Thanks, buddy. Hey, bathroom's fixed, everybody. Go for it. Let's all shit pitch. <laughs> I, uh, I like to ask folks, I usually go around and ask folks, like, what do you think is the hardest part of being in a relationship? Like, sir, what do you think is the hardest part of being in a relationship? Communication. Communication can be tough. What about, what about you? What's the hardest part of being in a relationship? Yeah, I'd probably say communication. Okay, you can't take someone else's answer. That's not how that works. 
All right, let's try and go to somebody else that realizes you can't repeat answers. What do you, what do you seem to want to be involved? What, what do you think is the hardest part of being in a relationship? Time. Time, yeah. You know, I think the hardest part, okay, you want to go too? I'll give it to you. Anal. Anal, that's actually, it's, it's easy as long as she's asleep. Uh, I'm married, it's illegal. Uh, I actually, I'll tell you what I think the hardest part of being in a relationship is, and it's, this is, this is, uh, it's like pretending to be surprised when she tells you she's been molested. It's like, you were? Oh my God, should I keep choking you or? Yeah, I can do this through the tears, that's no problem. All right, everybody. This has been me. I'm your host, Pat Logan. Uh, everybody. We're going to bring your very first comment to the stage today. Your very first comment of the evening is responsible for this teddy bear here. Uh, he's an old man who thinks it's totally appropriate to bring young men teddy bears on a Tuesday night. Put your hands together for the very friendly Mike Marr. I haven't been out since uh, before Christmas, so I'm a little rusty. Uh, but walking up here from my car, three people came up to me and told me that I've got that Einstein vibe. Yeah. And even my wife is reminded of Einstein in the bedroom because I come at the speed of light. Yeah. Now my wife calls me short pump. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm retired, and uh, I got a new old man smell. Yeah. yeah, it's a combination of Old Spice, Ben Gay, and poverty. Yeah, um, a lot of folks say that uh, with old age comes wisdom, but I got fries instead. Lucky me. All right, we'll have to work on that. Um, <laughs> running out of steam here. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, this is why, this is why. Uh, this is one of my best jokes here. That senior moment is brought to you by 50 years of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Party on guard. Um, my wife and I have been married a very long time, and she can tell when I'm drunk, because I slur my farts. <laughs> it's like a secret Morse code. Uh, I got married when I was 34. Look at me now, I'm 36! <laughs> No, seriously, seriously, I'm retired. I just feel like I'm 36. My wine is still fine on the vine. Yeah. All right, I'm curious. You're curious? All right, okay. <laughs> hey, I uh, came home last night and I took a shower and I walked in the bedroom naked. And my wife pointed and said, you ought to put that little bit in your act. Need some work, need some work. Yeah, uh, I'm not making this stuff up. I'm handy, I'm handsome. If you still. Yeah, I think I'm a good catch. I do all the maintenance around the house. I periodically check my equipment to make sure it's operational. And my wife calls it jerking off. I just can't win. Uh, you know, I, I'd like to think that I can do math like Einstein, or that I'm good at math like Einstein, but I realized that I'm much better at drinking. And my uh, version of E equals MC squared, Everclear equals me seeing double. Yeah, baby. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and uh, you know, I used to have a very serious problem with binge drinking until I started calling them naps. 
and then everything became copacetic. And my wife says, no, just pathetic. That's all, just pathetic, okay? Yeah. Uh, a lot of young kids, like you all, think that I'm profound. I'm not profound. I'm anti-lost. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> a, lot, a, a lot of people, uh, think that, um... Oh, let's see, I lost my place here. Okay, okay, hey, okay, all right. So, uh, yeah, let me, let me go check my notes. Hold on a second. Party on, Garth! <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So, uh, you know what? I don't care what people say. I have a hero that I look up to for the way that I live my life. And if it's good enough for Fred Flintstone, it's good enough for me. Yabba, frickin' dabba, frickin' do! All right, folks, listen, with geriatric stand-up fall season is your round. You've been great, thank you so much. Mike Marr, everybody, don't forget your phone, Mike Marr. Mike Marr was doing comedy so long when he said, yeah, the frickin' dab a frickin' do on stage, he was arrested along with Lenny Bruce. <laughs> All right, everybody, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Uh, by the way, Mike Marr running for president this year, isn't that amazing? Uh, all right, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Your next comic coming to the stage, very funny guy. This is the second open mic of the night. Of course, it's the first one where the host and the microphone actually showed up. So put your hands together for Josh Ward. What's up, home sweet home? How y'all doing tonight? Good. Woo! Good. 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 I'm, I'm all right. I'm trying to recover. I'm in a little emotional despair this evening because um, I got some bad news this morning. Uh, my wife told me that my butt's getting flat and I have yet to emotionally recover from that shit. <laughs> like, your woman ever told you your ass ain't fat no more? That's wild as hell, ain't it? I don't understand. These ladies taking this equality shit a little too far, don't you think, man? I gotta have a fat ass too? Pay all the bills and shit? This shit is wild, man. Fat ass is wild for a man. I don't know. Anybody else like fat asses? Yes. Yes? <laughs> this guy raised his hand quick. Well, aren't you the guy who was talking about eating something earlier? I'm worried about you, man. I think you like fat asses a little too much. problem for me, mate. Hey, are you one of those ass eaters out here? Your boy, your boy said he eat ass. He's proud of that shit, man. That's wild. I didn't know people was doing that shit, bro. Eating ass? Bro, I'm gonna be honest, ain't no such thing as a fresh ass. Like, <laughs> your woman can be fresh out of the shower by the time she stepped two feet on the bathroom floor, nigga, that ass is assing again. <laughs> I mean, it don't take long for ass to ass, just two matches, man. <laughs> ass is assing out here, that shit is wild, bro. <laughs> you know eating ass gotta be like a new term, like a new thing to do. Could you imagine eating ass in the 1600s? That old horse and buggy ass? <laughs> Y'all eat ass, man. Y'all terrible out here. But yeah, she told me my ass is getting flat. And I, I don't know what to do about that shit, man. Cause like, why well, I gotta have a fat ass? You know what I'm saying? As a man, like that's like me telling her to have a healthy prostate. Like, it's just not your job. You see what I'm saying? Uncanny out here, but I guess I gotta do it. Y'all working on your asses? Y'all working your glutes and shit? I gotta add this shit. I've been losing weight. You know what I'm saying? I'm down 65 pounds. Get it up for that. Give it up for that. Y'all don't care about that? <laughs> he was like, good for you, brother. <laughs> yeah, I'm down 65 pounds. Anybody who tried to lose weight before understand that the ass goes first. Like, before you lose any of this right here, your ass is out the window. My shit is fleeting right now. And I just gotta embrace it, you know what I'm saying? It's all right, though. I'm gonna be honest, but if she want me to have a fat ass, like, I want all the bad bitch treatment that comes along with having fat ass out here, you know what I'm saying? I want like a fancy bag, some Birkin, you know what I'm saying? Some shit, fake titties, I don't know. <laughs> Whatever they're giving bad bitches these days, I want all of it, you know what I'm saying? It's fine. <laughs> fat ass, that's funny. Uh, 
Anybody religious? You guys religious at all? I respect it. <laughs> That's wild. I'm not super like religious, but like I'm not an atheist or anything either. Cause like, I want to talk to the manager when this shit is over. <laughs> like life on earth is ghetto as fuck, man. I don't love this shit at all. Y'all just stood back and watched this shit happen. It's wild out here. It's all right, I gotta talk to somebody at the end of this shit. <sighs> social media? Anybody in social media? This guy was like, no. Oh, you one of them Greek guys, huh? Are you married? Nope. And you don't have social media? He's definitely a serial killer. <laughs> um, is that hard when you meet women and you tell them that shit? You got LinkedIn. You got LinkedIn. <laughs> I'll tell you about my career, but I won't tell you about my hobbies, bitch. <laughs> they say you got LinkedIn. How you meet women? On the apps. On the apps? You have no social media. What apps? Oh, the dating apps. Like Bumble and stuff like that? Met anybody good lately? No. <laughs> What's your name? Steve. Steve, I had high hopes for you, Steve. You failed me out here. Steve's not getting laid tonight, guys. It's fun, you know. It's good. It's overrated. It's okay, Steve. I'm glad y'all came out tonight. What are you guys playing right here? Pandemic? That's like somebody's worst nightmare. Why are you, who made that a game? Are you just spreading disease everywhere? We're finding a cure. You look like you found a cure, Dr. Lamar. I'm sorry. All right, guys, I don't have enough time to have fun with y'all tonight, but I'm Josh Ward, y'all have a great night. Comedy, everybody. Josh Ward, give it up for him. All right, we're keeping this thing moving. Your next comic is actually one of the hottest young comics in the city right now. He's getting booked on everything, he's performing everywhere. Uh, this guy was actually just featured in Style Weekly as the most eligible young bachelor in the subcategory of local comedy. Because Style Weekly needs to have a special edition every month now. Uh, everybody, put your hands together. For the hot, the young, the sexy, Ben Pierce. Oh, like a fluffable Todd Berry. Ben Pierce, everybody. Like a combination of John Fetterman and John Panette. All right. Your next comment coming to the stage is your only performer tonight with a TV credit. You might recognize her from six seasons on NBC for her famous catchphrase, I'll be down in a minute. Put your hands together for Holly Bumfolk, everybody. was I never say that. Uh, I, would, I used to work at a Harley Davidson dealer and I had to quit after a while because it sucked. I mean we were all falling apart over there but our manager would always tell us guys we're such a great team which is true we did work well together that's why five of us quit at the same time. <laughs> that's what I call team effort. And then he started talking bad about me behind my back. And I thought he was my friend, so it really hurt me, you know? So I said, I'm gonna hurt him like he hurt me. I'm gonna unfriend him on Facebook. Take that. Only to find out that he had already blocked me. Little bitch. <laughs> but it's okay, some good things happened at that job. I actually got a raise while I worked there. Yeah, it's because minimum wage went up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've, I've been at my new job for a while now. Um, it's one of those jobs where they say, at this job, we're a family. If we're a family, why are we allowed to date our coworkers? <laughs> they need to change the employee handbook. <laughs> yeah, and I, I kind of hate it, but it has some nice perks. Like, on Fridays, we get to wear matching red shirts. And every week, we get to get overtime. 
And uh, we get these like stupid coffee cups that have daily applications on them, you know, because they fix everything. I actually love my job. I'm not going insane. I'm not going to kill myself. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, uh, one day I got one that said, don't be mean, drink caffeine. <laughs> Joke's on you, I can do both. <laughs> and if I'm struggling, my manager will say to me, hang in there, just hang in there. So I don't know why he got confused when I tried to hang myself. <laughs> I was just doing what he told me to. <laughs> Hell yeah, that one works. I'm not going to kill myself now. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been really sad at work because recently um, a lot of the offices just banned Nerf guns. And, you know, what's, what's even more sad is my office never even had them to begin with. You know, how are we supposed to have fun now? By hanging in there? Yes, it is. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like most of my coworkers there, but there's just one I really hate. She's really rude and she don't do her job. And she takes a lot of smoke breaks because she identifies as a chimney. But I'm not sure if I want her to quit because if she keeps smoking more and more, maybe she'll die. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, and I, uh, I hate the customer. I hate a lot of the customers too because they're very disrespectful to me all the time. They treat me like I'm stupid, which I know is hard not to do because I am stupid. But recently, a customer called me a little girl. Little girl, bro, I wanted to fight this old lady. I taped a picture of her in my punching bag. And you know what? I'm gonna steal her life alert. She's gonna fall down and she ain't getting back up. Do y'all like chickens? Yes, one guy likes chickens, that's my man. Uh, yeah, I actually have chickens as pets and people ask me all the time if I eat them. And I tell them, no, that's so cool, why would I do that? I eat their relatives. They don't have to know. And uh, I have this little rooster who's really cute. But yeah, I admit it, I have a small cock. I know some of y'all can relate. <laughs> he, do he does what he can with what he has, okay? But I used to have this one rooster, he was so mean. He's one of the meanest roosters we ever had. So of course, his name was Kevin. <laughs> But he scared me so bad, every time I went out to the chickens, I had to bring a baseball bat. But it all turned out okay in the end, because he made some beautiful babies, and then my dad shot him. Yes, everybody dies tonight. <laughs> uh, if you didn't hear, my last name is Bombfuck. I hate it because everyone calls me Bumfuck. <laughs> It makes it sound like I come from a long line of butt fuckers. Which makes sense, because my dad was in the Navy. I mean, he started looking bananas all of a sudden. And he just got a new truck with vibrating seats. Which I need to borrow. Uh, guys, that's been my time. You've been awesome. Thank you so much. She's no longer Holly Buttfuck, she's got a gay dad, everybody. And it's just Holly, Holly didn't get the reference, but Holly, uh, it's a show called To Catch a Predator, where, uh, where they would arrest all the men who buy you new track phones. Uh, all right, no, but Holly is totally legal, and we have to get her out of the bar now that her set's done. Uh, let's move along, everybody. Your next performer. Wow, what a guy. This guy is a saint. Okay? And by that, I mean he hates the Jews. Put your hands together for a pro-Palestinian comic, Will Minor! Yeah! Baruch Hattar, everybody! What's going on? Break out the men of Shemitz or whatever! Hello, hello, hate them! I know Jew stuff! Hell yeah! Oh boy, I love a good deal when I see one. Uh, just kidding. Keep it going for Jacob, everybody. Fantastic. I actually designed the new flyer for the show he does here. I'm very excited. I designed a flyer. Jacob was like, Will, I have to pay you. And I was like, Jacob, I can't take your money. I love you too much. Also, people don't accept Confederate dollars anymore. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Texas. They will one day, baby. They will. I know. We're going to bring those statues back, bud. As soon as Texas gets that border closed, we're going to get them. You're goddamn right. Florida standing with them. Oh, good. As a keep it going for Holly, everybody. Richmond's number one butt fucker. Come on. She definitely concealed berries. Oh, shit. I love how all of your punchlines were like, and then they died. She might need a hug. I don't know. Oh, boy. Wow. Make some noise if you wore flannel tonight. Hey, oh. There it is. You did not flinch. Ah. I'm very scared of you. <laughs> you haven't blinked since I got up here. Oh boy, I'm gonna do my very best. I'm a tall guy. Any tall fellas? Any other tall guys? Hell! Oh, Jesus Christ! I feel like Chris Rock. <laughs> Actually, no, dude, do it. The clip. I would be. I would go viral. Please, come on. No, we'll do it again. We'll take it back. I'll be like. Oh, I'll be like a yellow. Yeah, for the lawsuit. Ah, I would take you for everything you've got. <laughs> oh boy, I'm tall. I've got a big butt. Tall guy, big butt. Anyone else? Tall, the big butt. Don't be afraid, sir. Stand up and proud. Clap for this man. He is tall and has a fat tiny. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. I don't know about you. It's hard, isn't it? Hard having a big butt. You know what I mean? It's hard to find seats sometimes. Everywhere I go, people are dropping pencils and like, Will, why don't you pick up that pencil? <laughs> people are always like, twerk, cracker, come on. Cracker, twerk for us. I'm sure that happens a lot. <laughs> I am doing new stuff. Uh, I recently got shot. I got shot. Not today. That like not today. That'd be crazy. That'd be wild. If I got shot, like came here, I was like, give me the mic. I've got to talk. <laughs> give me the mic. I must speak. I'm like Teddy Roosevelt. Ah, I've got a joke to say about my penis. It must be told. No, I got shot. Like it's not as I. It's way. It's not as. It's crazy as you think. I was walking home from work and a car rolled up next to me. They rolled down the window and the guy stuck an airsoft gun out and just lit me the fuck up. This guy just like rattled me up, up and down with this airsoft gun. And I was really, really pissed. And I don't know what made me more upset. The fact that like some jackass just shot me or the fact that I found out my last words might be, fuck my ass. <laughs> It's a very humbling moment to realize what you're going to say when you get shot. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm such a coward. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I think we're better than I thought. Hell yeah, I'm going to keep that. <laughs> I said, he'd be mad. Because you're like, he didn't really get shot. Shoot him. <laughs> Make him know. Oh boy. They released the list, everybody. Did we see the list? The names are out, everybody. They released the list. You know what I'm talking about? God, I hope I get it. I hope I get it. How many children did they fuck? How many boys? How many girls? How many children did they fuck? Okay, we're not fans of musical theater. That's okay. That's a chorus line. He had sex with children on island. Have you read the news? It's a whole island full of sex children. No, it's fucked up. What do you guys think we should do with the island? What do you think we should do with the island, sir? Yeah, it does. I was like. Now I'm really scared. Holy shit. I'll, I'll, I'll pick up somebody else. I'm sorry. I won't bother you anymore. I'm so sorry. Friend with the PBR. What do you think? Because, like, you know, like, that the island, you know, all the bad stuff happened. What do you think, uh, friend with the PBR here? What do you think we should do with the island? Sink the island. Sink the island. That's going to be tough. <laughs> it is a whole ass island. That's going to be. I don't know if you see the new Godzilla. They're going to have to pull that shit. Oh, boy. I think they should turn into a state park. <laughs> Right, wouldn't that be cute? Come on, that'd be fun. Like you have tours? You're like, holy shit, whoa, what's that? That's a squirrel. Whoa, what's that? It's a parrot. Oh my gosh, what's that? That's Stephen Hawking. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard, they said he was an active participant. I was like, mm, man. <laughs> That's a stretch. <laughs> I like to imagine Stephen Hawking showed up at the orgy and was just like, my chair is broken. I cannot leave. <laughs> also, for those of you that don't know who Stephen Hawking is, he did that song, Push Me, and then just touch me. <laughs> 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 He's a very famous musician. I don't know if you know Stephen Hawking. Thank you so much for putting up with me. Let's get Jacob back. Well, minor everybody, starting up his own show at Arden on Friday, running seven to nine. Arden, make sure you check that out. Make sure you go out and support that so we can do more of them. See, that was a nice thing. It wasn't tongue in cheek at all. All right, cool. Normally people applaud good behavior, but that's fine. Uh, all right, your next comedian is a big fat piece of shit who sucks assholes. He's 
from the middle of the country that we all fly over and don't care about. Uh, he's a waste of space. He's corn fed, which you can tell from an airplane. Uh, he's got clogged arteries. And he's mildly humorous, but in a sort of all shucks kind of way. Put your hands together for a real Midwestern piece of shit. It's Kale Moore. <laughs> I love you too, Jacob. How we doing, everybody? We're almost at the end of the first month of the year. How do we feel about, about it so far? Yeah, resounding man. 2024, what a stupid fucking time to be alive, am I right? I can't wait for the 2024 John Henry. It's just going to be a guy trying to draw hentai faster than ChatGPT. He's going to finish the last tentacle and then die of exhaustion. <laughs> yeah, I celebrated a birthday recently. Uh, I turned 30. You made it. I was expecting this amount of applause. Uh, but, um, you know, it's, it's, 30 is a big year, so I started to like kind of look back realize how much I've matured recently. I mean, I have two boys now. They're a big responsibility. And I have to fill up their food bowl every couple days. <laughs> My boys are cats. <laughs> um, but no, I, I had a quiet birthday at home. It was just me, them, a laser pointer, and two grams of mushrooms. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm so fucking glad Christmas is over, because honestly, I, I can't stand Christmas. My least favorite thing about Christmas is those fucking car commercials, <laughs> where it's always like a person buys their white heterosexual spouse a GMC Sierra with a big red bow on top of it. If that happened in real life, if your spouse was like, honey, come out to the driveway, I have a surprise for you. I signed a $40,000 lease for us. There would be a murder-suicide. There would be a new Netflix documentary in a week's time. Uh, so recently, uh, I know uh, <laughs> this is going to be a touchy subject, I already know. Uh, you know, fentanyl is a big issue in Richmond. And recently I picked up some of those like testing kits where, you know, you put a little cocaine into some water and test for fentanyl. And I read the instructions. And I think the weirdest part was it says, the amount of cocaine should be roughly equal to the hair of the president's head on a penny. It's like, I feel like you have to be on drugs to come up with that. <laughs> with that unit of measurement in the first place. But I was just imagining, like, person, like, carefully scooping cocaine onto, onto Abe's head for, like, half an hour. One for Abe, one for me. One for Abe, one for me. <laughs> and we have fentanyl detection now, but from what I've seen, what we really need is cocaine detection. <laughs> Whoever invents a, a metal detector for a cocaine is going to be a fucking millionaire. Because I cannot count how many times I've watched someone buy cocaine and then it just disappears instantly. It's like a magic trick. It's like, you want to see me make $200 disappear? Whoop. No, if there's a cocaine detector, there would just be people covering Cary Street. Just <laughs> blocking traffic. Uh, fuck. Yeah, I, uh, let's go back to how much I hate Christmas. That's fun, right? I, I walked into PetSmart to get food for my boys, and, uh, there was so much Christmas-themed shit in there, and I was like, what do animals give a shit about Christmas? <laughs> what do they know? I think the weirdest thing I saw were these Christmas-themed edible waffles designed for dogs. And uh, anybody want to guess what they're called? Wolfles is the logical answer, right? But whatever Harvard advertising exec came up with this decided to call them Rufles. 
<laughs> Which to me sounds less like a waffle for dogs and more like brunch at Bill Cosby's house. <laughs> All right, I'll leave you on this one quick. Uh, any computer programmers in here? Okay, good. I might have to talk to you after the show. I have an idea. I want to make a VR game. I want to do a VR stealing an officer's service weapon simulator. <laughs> Just talk to me afterwards. We'll make this thing happen. I've been Kale Moore. Thank you guys. Kale Moore, everybody. All right. Your next performer is the only performer to write their own intro and have asked me to read it word for word and not do any of my ad libbing. And she's a girl, so I will. Uh, hey, what's up, you pay pigs? Are you ready to get your nutsack stepped on because that's how mistress likes to do it? Doesn't matter if you're ready or not. It's time for the show to begin. So open up your wallets and make those coins drop. It's your next performer, Grace Moyer. What the fuck, Jacob? God damn it. Oh, that was Emily's. I'm sorry. Oh, how's it going, guys? How do we feel about virtual appointments? I think they've gone too far. Uh, you know, they're great for some stuff. Like, I love going to therapy in bed. But I've got to draw the line at virtual gynecologists. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? You know, how does that work? Am I just supposed to describe it to them? And they have to take my word for it? Or am I expected to show whole on camera? <laughs> But I'm paying them? <laughs> Something's not adding up, guys. I've seen Black Mirror. Something's just smelling a little fishy. Um, do you guys like Harry Potter? Yes. I was too aggressive on my ass. It's like, I liked it when I was a kid, but like, as an adult, why are you still that into it? You know what I mean? Like, anytime I see an adult take a trip without kids to Harry Potter World, I'm just like, like, why? You know, just so you can like, go to Ollivander's wand shop and pick out a special wand? Grow up. Go to the adult store and buy a vibrator like the rest of us. <laughs> it's the exact same experience. <laughs> they can all cast spells, but only one is your special wand. <laughs> and it chooses you. It took, I walked into the store, it took me 30 seconds, okay? Only one of them has little cherries on it. That's, I, I'm not allowed to buy a different one. Uh, it's core is made of uh, boy tears and girl cum. <laughs> and I haven't had the urge to have sex with a man in months. <laughs> Truly magical. Uh, anyways, I've noticed a weird trend recently where every ad that I get on SoundCloud is for a different hardware store. Which is weird because I thought that our ads were supposed to be targeted towards us, and I only use SoundCloud to listen to unreleased Lana Del Rey songs. But then I realized it is targeted. They're just trying to help me find sexy dads. <laughs> They're like, stop listening to songs about fucking older men. Go to Home Depot and find your own. <laughs> pussy where your mouth is. <laughs> that was supposed to be a play on the phrase, put your money where your mouth is, but it just sounds like giving myself head. <laughs> I wish, am I right? <laughs> Liars. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I, I have kind of started dating some older men lately. 
Uh, not that old, just like, you know, guys were born in the 90s. Because <laughs> uh, I feel like I've gotten to a point where it's old enough that it's not really weird anymore, unless you draw attention to it. And if you don't want to draw attention to it, there's really only two topics you need to steer clear of. Historical events and children's TV shows. I'm just like, no, I... I don't remember 9-11. <laughs> Do you remember iCarly? <laughs> so, you know, that can be weird, but it's better than the alternative. So I really can't deal with men who are younger than me. You know, the last time I hooked up with a guy who was younger than me, he said he was my age. But looking back, it's very clear he was lying because I told him to bring wine and he brought Cupcake sparkling rosé and barefoot pineapple moscato. <laughs> which I'm pretty sure are exclusively for people who are still underage. Yes. Don't get me wrong, I, I'm not above drinking cheap or fruity drinks. Just the ones that were clearly purchased at whatever 7-Eleven is closest to BCU campus and doesn't card. <laughs> So, you know, older men, younger men, it's all the men, guys. They're all bad. I'm not a feminist, okay? I hate how there's that misconception that feminists are all angry man-haters. Because really, they're just people who believe in equality. And I am an angry man-hater. <laughs> That's my time. I'm Grace Moore. Thanks, everybody. Grace Moyer, everybody. Keep going for Grace Moyer. All right. Your next performer coming to the stage is a New York City comedian who's just waiting for the Chinatown bus to leave at midnight. That's true, everybody. Put your hands together for New York City Zone. Bo Artemisan. All right. New York City, Silver Fox. Here he comes. I'm from Cleveland. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, people say some really mean things to skinny people. And uh, it's probably why skinny bitches are so mean. Um, and uh, it's way meaner than you look like you need a sandwich, which you can always say, well, you, you look like you don't. But I mean, I don't speak to their level. I mean, I take the high road, because I'm higher than high most of the time. But I don't say you look like you don't need a sandwich because that would be mean and I don't say mean things because I'm not mean like the rest of these skinny bitches. And I know that sounds offensive, but it's not and I'll explain because evidently old white guys saying offensive things and then explaining why they're not offensive is really popular right now. <laughs> uh, it's right up there with mansplaining, you know, when a man over explains something didn't need to be explained in the first place, then he does a reprise, an encore, DJ remix, all because he's high, but because he has a penis, it's called mansplaining. I just kind of mansplained what mansplaining is, so that was kind of awesome. <laughs> so, men, you're toxic, if you over explain, you're high, you have a penis, and uh, even though the only reason you do it is because you're really high, what gets you into trouble is that you do it with your penis. Everything you do is an extension of your penis. You think with your penis and you use your penis as a weapon. And as men, we don't say anything to object to that, honestly, just because it sounds so cool, but we don't understand it. We certainly don't know how to do it, or we would at least try to do a way better job of it. I think my reptilian brain would need a woman to explain it to me until I could repeat it back. But that could be interpreted as mansplaining. You don't want to do that because that could be offensive because you have a penis. <laughs> uh, no, seriously. And uh, even though repeating back what someone has said to you is the hallmark of being a good listener, if you do it with a penis, is offensive. But I, I, I know that that is why I do it. Um, but I understand why women would have this dynamic with their uh, husbands and boyfriends. I mean, I get it. As long as you haven't trapped in the web, you tricked him into entering, you get to torture him in all the ways. I mean, I get that. But not me. I'm not the bad guy. You don't get to berate me at work for being knowledgeable and willing to fully impart that knowledge unto others less fortunate in the knowledge department. Which reminds me, gay guys don't have sex with their female co-workers and gay guys don't have sex with your female friends, they'll be mean to you forever. 
I mean, don't do it especially after eating a bunch of mushrooms and she started talking about how like, having sex with a woman is like the gayest thing you can do. It made so much sense at the time. I did get sucked up into her like psychedelic conversion camp for a while. So if you're already anticipating that this is going to end with a warning to not do mushrooms, you'd be wrong, it shouldn't and it doesn't. But guys, if you finally change after having been berated for giving one word answers like some kind of Neanderthal, and it finally started trying to communicate as you've been asked to do repeatedly for years ad nauseum, you should have known it was a trick and you have no one but yourself to blame. I mean, a good rule of thumb when asked a question is just to say, honey, would you like a one word answer? Or would you like a more than one word answer, dear? And if you'd like a more than one word answer, would you please just stop me when I finally explain this fully enough for you to comprehend what I'm trying to get across to you? It goes over really well. Try that. Because straight guys are dumb, right? No, your wife think that, but it's not true. Even though you did kind of fall for the oldest trick in the book, but it's not your fault. It's not like you walked into a pit marked quicksand. Someone mislabeled the sign. You walked into a pit of quicksand marked marriage. So guys, just know. If you overexplain and you're hot and you have a penis, and I'm thinking even these days, most guys might have like two out of three of those, you know, just be careful in the interest of being sensitive, because it can be a trigger. It's called penis envy. You can look it up. I have totally lost my train of thought, so I'm really big. I have no idea where I was going. Oh, oh, score, that was it, okay. When men are really baked, they're just over explaining, they have no idea where they're going with it. And then they, what is the of thought? Oh my God, I did it again. I'm such a stupid skinny bitch tonight. Score, that's what I was saying. It was like, I was explaining why it's not offensive for me to say skinny bitches, here's why. I was at this high school reunion and was standing with a couple of women, one of whom was, you know, the psychedelic, you know, psilocybin succubus. And I just made a joke. I gestured over to a couple of our friends who've always been thin and gorgeous. I said, yeah, look at all the skinny bitches standing together. She goes, yeah, you should go stand with them. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go stand with the skinny bitches. Y'all have a good night. Thank you so much. So Art of Azan, everybody, the Silver Fox. Which is just a polite way of saying Mike Mars is ugly. <laughs> uh, they're both old guys, that's the joke there. Uh, the next comic coming to the stage works at Dominion Energy. I don't know if you've heard of it, it's a local utility company. He also hosts a show at a bar that is currently running a Kickstarter to pay their energy bill. No one put those two together. And this weekend on Sunday, he's having a one year anniversary show where he says he's paying the performers. We'll see. Everybody, put your hands together for a guy who's always living his life somewhere in the middle. It's Pat Logan. What's up, home sweet home? How y'all doing, guys? Come on. Uncle Bobby passed away last week. He died from cancer. It's sad, I know. Um, he would always tell me that he wanted to come see me do comedy. He'd say, let me know when you do a show. So I'd tell him, Uncle Bobby, I'm in Richmond. You should come out. And he would say, I would. I'm just not feeling good. So I did a show closer to him in Petersburg. I was like, Uncle Bobby, I'm right down the street. You should come out. He's like, I would, but I'm just not feeling good. So we had a party at his house with karaoke and a microphone. I was like, Uncle Bobby, I'm in your front yard. I'm going to do stand-up. You should check it out. And he would say, I would, but I'm going to go in the house and die from cancer. <laughs> so rest in peace, Uncle Bobby. Uh, I imagine he would enjoy this. Uh, yeah, I'm just getting over COVID for the second time. Ever since the first time I got COVID, it, it messed my sense of taste and smell up. Ever since I got COVID, coffee and shit smell the exact same to me. So when I'm making coffee in the morning, I'm like, damn, it smells like shit in here. Or when I'm taking a shit, I'm like, ooh, somebody's making coffee. Uh, or when I'm eating ass, I'm like, damn, girl. Somebody had a mocha this morning. You're my dirty little latte. 
You're my express hoe. She's my mocha mommy and she makes me bust a hazelnut. Uh, is that a whole coffee bean? I'm going to swallow that. Uh, that's me flicking the bean, guys. Uh, no, the best part of waking up is folders in your butt. Um, let's see. Um, uh, I've been thinking about a girl lately. We went on a date at the county fair last year, and I've been thinking about her. She said the cutest thing when we got on the Ferris wheel, she was like, Patrick, I don't want to ride the Ferris wheel. It's probably only been tested once in the past year. I said, that's more than me. Uh, I haven't been tested in the past 10 years. She still rode me, guys. Uh, you know, I really got to stop doing jokes about STDs. Um, I have a lot of jokes about herpes, and I feel like the law of attraction is real. Because I have all these jokes about herpes, and the past two dates I went on, both girls told me that they had herpes. And it's okay if any of you have herpes, just don't touch me with your vagina. You know? um, no, but yeah, the law of attraction, jokes about herpes, girls with herpes, I'm not doing any more jokes about herpes. So I got this new joke about a tan brunette with a fat ass that loves giving blowjobs. Y'all are too old for the law of attraction. <laughs> they didn't have that back in your days. Yeah, I uh, I did that joke uh, last weekend, and uh, after the show, this girl came up to me and gave me a piece of paper, and uh, was like, my friend wanted me to give you this. And I opened it up and it said, a hot brunette with a fat ass. And my buddy was standing next beside me, he was like, yeah, that's gonna be the one that actually gives you herpes. Uh, <laughs> So, that's cool. Uh, give it up for the cameraman, my man Silver up in here, man. Come on, make some noise. Hell yeah, volunteer. I imagine that's what a pornographer is dressed like. Uh, this dive and come. Yeah. It's a gay porn tonight. How long have you guys been gay? Um, no, I'm kidding. I thought that would hit way harder. Pulse. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. A recent study says women on birth control are attracted to more feminine men. And women that are not on birth control are pregnant. I thought that was funny. Uh, let's see. Uh, I went on a date with a girl with a praise kink recently. Y'all know what that is? Praise kink? It's uh, when somebody gets off on getting praise. Uh, so every time I see her, I say, God is good. And I don't think she likes me because she never said all the time. Oh yeah, any of you guys go to church in here? Methodist? Any of you have black friends? Well, he knows what I'm talking about. You know that. Oh, God is good. He's probably not even religious. You're religious, sir? He said. I'm, I'm not good at crowd work, guys. I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm just fucking buying time here. All right, uh, anyways, yeah, if you can please support the GoFundMe for another round bar and grill. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I, I'm not. I don't do that. I promote comedy shows. Anyways, uh, please. I shouldn't have said that on camera. Delete this shit now. God damn it, uh, Brian. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. I just want people to come to the show. All right. Uh, thank you for having me. My name is Jacob McFadden, everybody. Give it up for your host, Pat Logan. Jacob McFadden, what an attractive, loving father. Uh, keep it going for him. Uh, I think I'm going to take all the money I'm getting paid on that Sunday show, all $6 in the quarter, too, and give it to Pat and write it off on my taxes. Uh, all right. We're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comic. Boy, oh boy, you guys are excited. He's the one you're all here to see. You thought you were here to play Pandemic. You thought you were here to throw darts. You thought a bunch of shit, but you were wrong. You were all here to see the man. Everybody, put your hands together. Steve Parker. Hello, home sweet home. You guys done with Christmas? You had enough of that? Moved on to not doing your New Year's resolutions already? Yeah, yeah. I'm still kind of stuck on the holidays. I found out that the guy I thought was my official father 
Last name Parker is on my birth certificate. Turns out that Parker is not my baby dad. <laughs> Makes for an interesting story. Yep, my mom was pregnant with me, married Parker. He's not the biological father. I went home thinking Christmas with my nice, boring, normal family. When it turns out we should have been on the Jerry Springer show. <laughs> but yeah, that news flash raises another question for me. Steve, who's your daddy? <laughs> yeah. But before you go thinking that my knocked up mom is like the town sludge, <laughs> some sort of local small town Kardashian, <laughs> understand that mom had a, a tough time. She was widowed in her 20s. Young, tough getting out, being on her own. A new man shows interest. She's on the rebound. A condom breaks, and nine months later, here I am. So, uh, you know, Ancestry.com, DNA, who is my baby daddy? Eddie. Eddie, we'll say. Eddie, the assistant manager at the local gas station. Eddie, who certainly pumped more than gas with my mom. <laughs> and Eddie, which explains why my middle name is Edward. Oh, no. <laughs> True story, I can't write you at that point. <laughs> now, move forward 60 years, and here I am. I'm recently single, like my mom, I'm widowed. I'm trying to figure out women dating, and let's just say the men and women differences are a lot more than I thought. Yeah, just take it from the top, start with hair, right? Women, great hair up top. Men, gray hair, not so much up top, but everywhere else. You know, it's like comparing Rapunzel and Sasquatch. And, you know, women, so nicely, coys, men, it's like we're still about 8% apes. I know some women think that's true emotionally as well, but that's a different set for the night. The, the other thing you think about that is, you think men would be more into hair removal than women? Yeah, you know, I mean, we try, we shave a little bit. Present company accepted. <laughs> but we're just doing this. Women, you've taken this hair removal thing to a whole new level. You guys are hair removal ninjas. <laughs> Give me a perfect example. My last girlfriend, Cindy. Now, this is kind of a personal story. Um, so I'm just calling her Cindy, because that's her name. <laughs> it's not like she's, you know, not going to sleep with me. We've already achieved that. <laughs> Cindy had a great head of hair, these teeny eyebrows, and not another hair on her body. Completely, completely removed. You know, I checked. Thoroughly. <laughs> Couldn't even find this double. No. Um, but nature had designed as grasslands and brush. She had permanently turned into a vast Arctic plain. <laughs> kind of like her sex life, but again, not her sex life. <laughs> Cynthia didn't just shake. Cynthia was like a hair removal mask. She went at it permanently. And I know there's some women here that. You know, I've done some hair removal, but you guys just get savage with it. You do electrolysis. You are electrocuting unwanted hair. This is like the death penalty for follicles. <laughs> you chemically destroy hair, chemical warfare, genocide on leg hair. You blast hair into oblivion with lasers. This is Star Wars level. <laughs> How much does it hurt to blow up the Death Star on your upper lip with a laser? <laughs> but there is one method, one method that is much, much more terrifying than any of those. Brazilian hot wax. Guys, put yourself in the ladies' shoes for a second here. There is no way, and I mean no way, you would pay a total stranger to put hot wax on your balls. <laughs> Feel it harden, clench up, and then violently rip it off like you're tearing down old wallpaper. 
Just so you can be smooth down there? Hell no, not happening. And ladies and gentlemen, if your woman is willing to do a Brazilian hot wax, you better worship at that temple. <laughs> That's my time, thank you. <laughs> Give it up for the GOP Senate Minority Leader, everybody, Steve Parker. That might be unfair. I thought you looked a little more like Lindsey Graham. You said my girlfriend Cindy. We didn't have sex, my girlfriend Cindy. Uh, you were born, you gestated for nine months. That's incredible, man. That's ugly. I just ate it for 10. My mother announced that at Thanksgiving this year. Yeah, they say you shouldn't ask questions you don't want the answers to. I said, what What the fuck? Why? And her answer was, in front of my wife, hey, you just liked it in there. <laughs> don't care for that at all. Uh, Steve, you said the greatest single line I've heard tonight. You said, and I quote, I noticed some women in here that have done hair removal. I don't currently have a podcast, but I'm going to start one after this show. We're going to get deep into that topic. I'd like to know exactly how you noticed the women here at the hair removal. What are the signs? How can you tell? Do you have, do you have to coat yourself in women's urine and hide in the bushes to catch up and do a hair removal? How early in the morning do we have to get up? Six. <laughs> All right. All right, we're gonna keep things going. Uh, your next performer, I accidentally read her intro earlier when introducing Grace. That's on me, my bad, everybody. Uh, put your hands together for the mistress of the dark midnight. It's Emily Erblin. Thank you. Give it up if you would, in fact, pay for someone to rip hot wax off your balls. Fellas, fellas, that's right, I would too. I would too. Uh, I like that you said Brazilian hot wax over and over as if it could be cold. I like that a lot. Um, everybody, uh, I am going strong on my New Year's resolution. It is January 31st. I'm feeling you know, pretty proud of myself. Uh, I quit smoking. Woo! Yeah. And I quit cold turkey too. Uh, you know, my friends were telling me quitting cold turkey was a bad idea, and honestly, like, day three into it, I started to agree with them, because not only was I irritable from the lack of nicotine, but I also couldn't enjoy my favorite lunch meat to take the edge off. Thank you. That one takes a minute. That one takes a minute. Y'all, um... Bitches love saying their dresses have pockets, am I right? <laughs> Bitches love that. Uh, you guys, I love karaoke. Anybody else with me who else loves karaoke? That's right, that's right. Um, my favorite karaoke song I've been doing lately is Little Diddy by Carly Simon. It's called You're So Vain. Are we familiar? Yes. You're so vain, you probably think this song is about you. There's this line in the song, it's profound. Carly Simon says, I had some dreams. They were clouds in my car. And I'm like, Carly, those aren't dreams. That's cream. Oh, you, you cringe. You scrunched up your face and cringed. I love that. <laughs> I love that so much. You guys, I took a flight the other day on the day we got like half an inch of snow here in Richmond. I was terrified that my flight would be canceled, uh, but luckily it was only delayed because the plane had to be de-iced. You know, that's when they take the nice watch and chains away from the plane to punish it. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone, I love doing stand-up comedy uh, for the experience of telling people that I do stand-up comedy. Um, I tell a woman that I do stand-up, they always have the same response. You're so brave. I can never do that. I tell a man I do stand-up, nine times out of ten they say, I can do that. Uh, but the best response I've had telling someone that I do stand-up comedy was from my grandmother. First off, she wanted to know if I do clean comedy, and I said, fuck no, bitch. 
<laughs> and then uh, she said, Emily, aren't you afraid that when you leave the comedy club, one of the other comics will rape you? Good God, Grandma, no! I'm afraid that one day I will really want to have sex with one of the other comics. <laughs> That's all. That's all we got. Everybody, I'm a consumer. I consume products. I live in the United States of America. That means I'm allowed to complain about the products that I consume. The other day I purchased a bag of bird seed. I followed all the instructions on the packaging. I've been waiting one full calendar week and I still haven't grown a single bird. What the fuck, you guys? Let's see. Um, I, uh, I went to the University of Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You heard of it? I've heard of it. Uh, <laughs> what, what do you think about the University of Richmond? Uh, yay! <laughs> Spiders. Yeah. Yeah, I majored in entitlement. <laughs> Thank you. I'm gonna go out on that one. Give it up your own <laughs> Thank you. Emily Ermlin, everybody. Give it up Emily Ermlin. Do you guys think she did well? Because yes. she literally walked the only guy in here who can't walk. Yes. That's not my joke. I stole it from another comic. <laughs> It only works right now, and no one gives Carlton credit for anything he does anyway, so... Yeah. Alright! Uh, <laughs> we're gonna keep this thing moving. Your next comedian is a great comedian. And if you don't agree with that, fuck you! Cave Wonders, everybody. My general style is very standoffish. Let's have some fun. Who did this? My car. This is disgusting. This is offensive. Do you see this? This is worse than what's happening in the Middle East right now. I'll say it. I'll fucking say it. I'm upset. I'm just, I'm gonna do some uh, performance art. We're gonna just stand and stare at the camera. <laughs> For just a penny a day, you can feed this bear. <laughs> he eats coins. <laughs> anyway, uh, what's your name again? Steve. Steve, of course it is. Is it all your friends? Yes, they are. With the bald spots? <laughs> uh, I count them in the back. The beanies count as bald spots. Have you been hiding? <laughs> yeah. I Oh, oh, bitch, don't, don't take it off and show me your fucking hairline going all the way back. You think you're, you think you're one-upping me? I know what's under there. I follow a lot of men's hairstylists on YouTube. Okay? Steve, you look like you're the, like, villain CEO of a tech company in a movie. What's up? I was that in real life. Wait, oh fucking course you are. That's why you look like it. You look like you laid 10,000 people off last year to buy a new yacht. <laughs> nah, you're not a boat guy. Yeah. More of a mansion guy. Yeah, you got indentured servants. Just two. <laughs> Steve has two slaves. Good job, Steve. Hell yeah. Steve, you up for Bush back in the day? Yeah, I did. So, yeah, so, okay, good, this joke's for you. I miss, I miss the Bush days in some ways, don't you? Don't yeah. all. Yeah, look, no, not you in the back. You look like, you like Toby Keith too much. Gross. Steve, god damn it, I hate how much I know about you just from your fucking sweater. This is so upsetting. Anyway, Steve, the Bush days, you like them because low taxes and you could buy another servant. Me, I like them because of the media headlines. Listen, those are the good old days. Like 16, it's been 16 years since we've had any good headlines. Like 16 years ago, we had a vice president that shot a federal judge. 
That's fucking awesome. <laughs> and remember, Dick, that's who you actually voted in for president. You know, we both know that. No, he, okay, if you're not aware, Dick Cheney, the pr vice president under George W. Bush, on a hunting trip in 2008, shot a federal judge in the face. <laughs> and nothing happened. <laughs> he got away with it. Because what could the other guy say? Thank you, Mr. Cheney. Because, like, Dick Cheney did 9 11. <laughs> what do you say to that guy? If he, did 9 if he did that to two big towers, what could he do to your house? <laughs> Chaos. Sweet. Thanks for playing with me, Steve. I appreciate it. I am now debating. Steve, have you ever hired an escort? <laughs> no, this is a segue into a story, but I wanted to sure. see. You've, no, no, you don't have to lie. You've been very honest with me so far. Did you vote for Trump? Okay, cool. So you're like one of those, like, rhinos. <laughs> yeah, you, you appreciate that? But... You're like my dad, but like, without a gay kid. <laughs> like, nothing pushed you any farther left. I got a son we're not sure about, so... Oh, he's gay. <laughs> he's gay, then. Are you gonna love your gay son? Absolutely. Are you? Ew. <laughs> to have a redemption arc? <laughs> Gross. Anyway, I'm running out of time. Okay, there's a new story I want to work on. You guys, I, none of you probably know. Has anyone been to the Hibachi Girl Buffet over on Gay Avenue? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Okay, I saw an escort. I don't, I don't know for sure, but I'm like 99.999% sure I saw an escort situation there. Yes. And yes. I wasn't always married. Ah, I was gonna say this guy there looked like a Virginian Tony Soprano. <laughs> which is just James Gandolfini that's not famous. <laughs> Rest in peace. But nah, like the lady he was there with was like an all pink with like six six inch like velvet heels. And she's eating lo mein and he's eating pizza. There's a lot more options than that. And then she goes away and then he eats her lo mein. It's so upsetting. No way. Yeah, dude, he eats her lo mein and then she comes back and she's pissed, as she should be, because this man ate her lo mein. You know, like, I don't care what you think about sex workers, George W. Bush. <laughs> but you don't eat other people's food. That's fucked up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna craft this into more of something. I'm recording it and Silver is as well. Hi, Silver, I love you. Um, sweet. Well, this has been fun. My name is Kate Wonders. Let's get Jacob back up here. Thank you. Well, I don't know what Kate does. The only way I eat an Asian hooker's lo mein is off of a buffet place. Uh, I live to wildlife. Uh, here, uh, by the way. Thanks, good boy. Uh, what are, you, what are you guys, are you exchanging numbers? What's going on here? I'm, I'm bridging the aisle. This is part of the... Yeah. This is, this is what it's supposed to look like when you drink this long. I thought you were just up. Benjamin Button Steve Jones. Uh, all right, we're going to keep the thing moving. I, and, uh, you know, honestly, your agent should have proposed by now. Your next comedian coming to the stage is brand new to this room. I'm excited to see him. Everybody, put your hands together for Josh David. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Josh David. I'm not sure how I feel because you didn't like make fun of me at all. That's I don't, how am I supposed to feel about that? Hey, give it up for a big, dumb-looking Italian. Thank Josh you David. very much. Thank you very much. That's really interesting because I have been told that I look like Lou Ferrigno uh, on chemotherapy. <laughs> so it's, it it's like perfectly. On the flip side of that, I've, look, I've been told I look like the pie fucker if he was on steroids. You guys remember Jason Biggs from American Pie? <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot fucking win. Ugh, it's the worst. Jason Big Games. Jason Biggs. Does anybody have a pen? Write that down. Uh, I am aware of the way I look. I wish I didn't look this way. Uh, I have prepared a short statement. Uh, I'm obviously a gym guy, a meathead. I, I really hope it's obvious. I, I hope to God that you can come and tell. Otherwise, I've wasted the last three decades of my life. One of the weirdest moments at the gym 
is when you're on the Universal, you kind of pull it down, and there's another man directly across the Universal, and you're just gazing into each other's eyes as you insert yourselves. It's uh, a very strange moment. Uh, I was coming home from the gym one day, and my neighbor has a little five-year-old boy, and we hang out all the time. And uh, I'm making a protein shake, right? And the little five-year-old goes, can I just pull this out? Yeah. This isn't awkward at all. Not at all. <laughs> just a little bit better. Uh, so I'm making a protein shake, and he's there, and he goes, is that supposed to give you big muscles? And I'm like, yeah, man, that, that's what it does. He's like, well, can I try it? I'm like, of course, man. So just pour him a little bit, and he tries it, and he immediately just looks at his arm. He, he expects to just blow up like the Incredible Hulk. And I'm like, that's adorable, and it's ridiculous. <laughs> and I also do the same fucking thing at the gym. <laughs> like, I want you all to look at this. It's like, ugh. <laughs> all right, let me consult my prepared statement here. You know, the funny thing is, being bigger doesn't get you anything. Like, I can bench 315 pounds, like how I work my PR and it just suddenly just for the girls in the back. I can bench 315 pounds, and I work at a fucking bank. I'm in project management. This gains me absolutely nothing. Uh, I am a little bit tired tonight. Uh, it's been a long day. I went to work, and uh, I also volunteer at the YMCA as an indoor soccer coach. This is a big mistake. I like Ted Lasso myself. They approached me and they're like, oh, you should volunteer, you're kind of outgoing, or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, sure, like, I'll help out around or whatever. And they're like, okay, well, we need an indoor soccer coach. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, well, there'll be other coaches around, of course. And they're like, yeah, 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 yeah. So just show up. Needless to say, I show up. I am the sole coach for 10 to 7 to 8 year old lunatics. These kids do not know what they're doing. They do not listen at all. Quick story from the first time uh, I'm coaching. A little girl kicks the ball, bam, she carries a great kick. She turns to the crowd immediately to her mom and says, I hate you for signing me up for this. <laughs> Another kid, I'm, I'm subbing kids in and off, we got too many kids. So I'm like, Carson, come here, come here, come here. I don't, I don't know why I just said his name, I didn't need to do that at all. I'm like, Carson, come here, come here, come here. All right, you're, you're coming off and I'm going in. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. And then he runs and he goes directly back onto the field. I'm like, what are you doing, kid? You are out. It's literally like an air hockey game being played by two raccoons on meth. It's just complete and total chaos out there. Grace, thanks for the assist. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and stop there. This is pretty much better than I've ever done, and I don't want to ruin the fucking rest of it. So thank you very much for your help. Josh David, everybody! Give it up for Josh David! It's hard to do this. Come on, give him another round of applause. What's the part in his set where he said, uh, my neighbor has a five-year-old son, and I just hang out with him. And as a dad, I was like, well, what the fuck's that about? And then I looked at him, I was like, well, fuck, I guess I would just have to let him hang out with my son. But then he said, I also work at a bank. I was like, okay, well, in this fantasy where I'm robbing a bank, I know I'm shooting first. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. If I said I'm going to murder the last performer, everyone gets weird about it. <laughs> Fine, I'll bathe in his blood and hope it gives me his power. I don't give a fuck. We are, but slap but, right? but, Yeah, we are, buddy, for sure. <laughs> Keep telling yourself that. Uh, by the way, I, when I said he was a big dumb Italian, one person in the back leaned over and was like, He's actually Jewish? <laughs> That's true. Like, I, okay. I saw him glorious bastards. I thought that was a different actor. Uh, all right, everybody. We're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comedian is the most Jewish comic in the city. He also can bench press 316 pounds. So I guess, I guess Josh David ain't shit. <laughs> bitch compared to your next comic. And your next comic wanted me to say that. He actually, your next comic is seconding for me in the arm wrestling contest, everybody. Put your hands together for the Popeye Richmond comedy. It's Big Chuck. Yeah! That coat ain't puffy, you 
your biceps are, bitch. <laughs> Uh, I don't know if I'm the most Jewish comic. Uh, I, sh I don't uh, regret it. Uh, <laughs> I abandoned it halfway. That was no. Um, why? Why are there male gynecologists? <laughs> like this is something I was like. This is a weird thing that multiple women I've known have told me the exact same thing, where they've been like. I'm looking for a new gynecologist. I hope the one on my insurance isn't a man. And every time that's happened, I've been like, that's still a thing? I don't know. Didn't like Susan B. Anthony abolish that? I don't know. I don't know what she did. Uh, Susan, maybe it wasn't Susan B. Anthony. Maybe it was Gloria Steinem. Uh, or maybe Sacagawea. I don't know. Um, my women's rights activist. But I, I, I don't know. I think uh, Sacagawea. Sacagawea. Uh, I just really wanted Sacagawea to be the punchline of something. Uh, I don't think it's that joke, but I'll, uh, I'll figure it out. Uh, I, I don't know, because, uh, it's kind of weird. That, like, it's weird, like, I think if someone goes to medical school, and they're a man, and they're like, yeah, I want to be a gynecologist. <laughs> I want to look at girls' pussies. Uh, I think they should be put on a list. I don't know. Uh, I think you need to call, like, Chris Hansen on that guy. Uh, I don't know, but I think I found a good deterrent. If you find a guy who's like, uh, yeah, I want to look at girls' pussies professionally, I think a good deterrent is to remind them, it's like, yo, dude, it's 2024. You're going to be looking at man pussy, too, all right? <laughs> and man pussy, man pussy, you guys seen man pussy before? <laughs> man pussy's tough, dude. <laughs> you guys know Buck Angel? All right, Buck Angel? Silence. Well, look him up. He's a male, por male, trans male porn star. This dude's got the angriest pussy you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> this dude's got an intimidating, powerful pussy, all right? And you get one of these creep gynecologists trying to feel him up, he's gonna rip their fingers right off. I think that's a good deterrent, I don't know. Also, it's, it's just kind of funny, because it's like, you never see it the other way, right? Like if guys had to go see a dick doctor like every like year or two, they'd be like, oh, I'm praying it's a girl. <laughs> I gotta see the dick doctor. I hope I got some big titted lady. <laughs> I actually did that once. I, I faked a dick injury. <laughs> I was like, oh boy, I hope I get some nice hot lady checking my dick out. Uh, instead, I got this 80 year old Soviet block guy. <laughs> 80 year old guy from Eastern Europe, he's just like, he jerks me off, he's like, it works, it works! Why are you complaining? You wasted my time, it works! <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. Also, you guys, uh, well, all, all the penis holders in the room, do you remember the first time you, sh you saw, like, adult pussy? Like, the first time I saw adult pussy, I was 10 years old, and one of my friend's uncles showed me porn, which... I think it's a funny story, but I tell people that and they like are like, are you okay? <laughs> I think it's funny. Honestly, I was more traumatized when my mom would like talk to her friends in the grocery store, but <laughs> that's more of a trauma to me. But no, I don't know. The first time I saw Pussy, yeah, my friend's uncle, he showed me all this like porn, he had porn magazines. And like when you're 10 and you see an adult woman's pussy, it's terrifying. <laughs> I saw it, I was like, is she hurt? <laughs> Did she do the splits on a buzzsaw? Uh, is she wounded? Why can I see inside her? Uh, it's like hair. I was 10. I didn't know women grew hair besides their head. I was like, what's, why is there hair? It looks like the thing from the thing. Uh, <laughs> Cool. Uh, <laughs> I have one one fan. Why not two? I can hear you. What'd you say? I got one fan. All right, that's fine. This guy's like, yeah. yeah. Well, you think pussy's gross too? Yeah. It is kind of weird because I, I like. Hey, there's parts of pussy like I like the way pussy feels. I like the way it tastes. <laughs> I don't like looking at it. <laughs> I'm like, I'd rather <laughs> not see this. Uh, I don't know, which is like when I look at porn, like I hate you go to porn sites and like the first thing you see will just be a woman with a gaping pussy. I'm like, 
I don't like. Like, I don't know. I like to watch videos of like naked girls just jamming their breasts together. <laughs> And they'll call it lesbian porn, even though I'm pretty sure no lesbian has ever gotten off doing that. <laughs> I don't know. All right, guys. Well, I got the light. Uh, thank you very much. I'm, and that's my time. I'm Charlie Wearing. Thank you very much. Charlie Wearing, everybody. All right. He likes pussy. <laughs> He likes the way it tastes, which is a lie. No one believes that. Oh, you guys like the way it tastes. Okay, that's cool. You guys ever had pizza? Pizza tastes good. Again, you want to talk about things that taste good that you like the way they taste, try pizza. Or, as your next comic would say, try Tiki Masala. <laughs> Your next comic likes his pussy real spicy and stinky. He likes pussy where when you sweat later, you can tell he ate pussy. Put your hands... <laughs> he likes a garam masala pussy, everybody. Put your hands together for the only guy who takes his pussy tandoori. It's Avi Tawari. <laughs> Yo, when I say sweet, sweet, you say ass. Sweet, sweet. Ass. Sweet, sweet. Ass. Hell yeah. I just wanted to do that. How are y'all doing? Y'all doing good? So, I was overseas for a little bit. I went to Malaysia. Um, you know they jerk you off for you? Like you, you don't have to take part. At all. They'll do... Excuse me? Awesome. You can book it any time, dude. That's how travel works. <laughs> they got flights all day. <laughs> nah, dude. Like, you know how you like know, normally like you're just jerking yourself off? I don't want to say five but They do it. <laughs> <laughs> nah. I I uh I love I love I like going overseas because I, I love showing off my American passport because I just feel like I'm better than other people. Like, I was talking to my grandma in India, and she was speaking Hindi to me. I was like, dude, I don't speak fucking booga booga, bro. Dude, I'm out here showing my passport to, like, babies and shit, just trying to get them to respect me. <laughs> no. <laughs> Excuse me? What is? For like babies, they don't speak shit, dog. <laughs> They're dumb. They're not dumb. They're, They're pretty. Dumb. I mean, dude, if you don't think babies are dumb, I got tell something to tell you about yourself, dude. <laughs> babies are stupid. I can list off reasons that why that they can't count. <laughs> number one, I'm better than a baby. I said number one, they can't do that shit. Dude. <laughs> Uh, nah, dude. Uh, you know how animals fuck weird? Yeah. Stop fucking animals. I can't help it. <laughs> They're hot. <laughs> no, animals do fuck. I was watching this uh, documentary, and they had, like, some uh, rhinos and shit. And, like, this one rhino, this one male rhino, really wanted to hook up with, like, this lady rhino. And uh, so, like, what he kept doing, like, he kept shoving his uh, horn right up her vagina, right? Which, like, you can't even call the cops on that shit, you know? Like, what are you gonna do? You can call the cops, they'd just be like, hey, man, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> that don't work. Yeah? <laughs> That's pretty much... Yo, uh, NYC, uh, New York, uh, in New York, in New York, they uh, they made a law where like uh, these kids, they gotta they gotta breathe like they have five minutes of mandatory breathing. Like yo, let these kids breathe, bro. Like all day, you know. 
I think that's ethical. Um, you remember, uh, you guys seen like the, uh, the Lord of the Rings movies? Yeah. Yeah? You know like the, the, when like Frodo went on that adventure? And then like those two other hobbits like hopped in with him? That's the worst deal ever, bro. Like, cause you, now you gotta take care of two hobbits. Right? Like one time, like I, wa I, I, I was driving by like a neighbor's house and they had like an ambulance pulled up and I was like, yo, should I stop there and like help out and see what's going on? And, but then I was like, cause I was smart. I was like, no, cause they're just gonna be like, yo, you go stand over there, bro. We don't need your help. All right, well, thank you guys so much. That's been my time. Give it up for your host, Jacob McFadden. Vitoire, everybody, and I'd like to apologize for all that stuff I said about pussy before it said. <laughs> it was in poor taste, mostly because of the Indian food thing I was trying to do with it, yeah. I've been informed by women that that would actually hurt a lot if you try to flavor it that way, so uh, my apologies. Um, but if you ever try and break into my house, I do know a new defense against women, so be ready. All right, your next comedian coming to the stage is like if all of the 90s industrial metal became a person and then did comedy. Everybody, put your hands together for the tool of Richmond comedy. Chris Lippa. How's it going, everybody? Still awake, still here, y'all still up? Yes, good. 2024, how's that going for everybody? 2020, I can't believe it. It's been 20 years since Ruben Stutter was apologizing out here. You remember Ruben Stutter? It's been 20 years. American Idol fans. Um, I uh, went to Chipotle the other day. Any Chipotle fans? Anybody frequent Chipotle? They've really, uh, they've really fallen off recently. Back in 2015, 2016, Chipotle was the spot. Every time you go, fast moving line. All the food was hot. All the employees were nothing but gay black men and beautiful Spanish women. It was awesome. <laughs> then something happened. Lines started taking forever. Half the stores started closing. People started getting sick. It's like it's like COVID hit Chipotle first out of anywhere. But I still frequent them. And nowadays, every time I go, I gotta try to make the people working there laugh, or I flirt with them, I compliment them, I do whatever to get more chicken. <laughs> they'll load you up with the cards and they get bullshit little tiny scoop of chicken. Look you in their face and say, no, what's next? What's next? What's next? You give me more chicken. That's what's next. <laughs> short me on my scoop. Anytime they short me on my scoop store, I make sure I go grab a whole handful of plastic forks on the way out. <laughs> I'll make up for it some way or another, cost averaging. Uh, enough plastic forks to sponsor my next three parties. Love movies, big movie fan. 2024 was great, but uh, 2023 was a great year for movies. Great year for scary movies. I love scary movies. They had The, uh, the Nun 2. Um, in, in my opinion, scariest movie of the year was the trailer for The Exorcist. The trailer alone scared the shit out of me. This guy, you know what I'm talking about. According to my conservative friends, the scariest movie of the year is Barbie. <laughs> really, really freaked them out. The only thing that scared me about Barbie was them potentially ruining the best Matchbox 20 song of all time. <laughs> really not gonna let them down for that one. I, um, I like recommending movies to people. Somebody asked me to recommend them a good drama. I said, have you ever seen The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith? They said, I'm not in the mood for documentaries right now. <laughs> Firm believer they should remake that. As a documentary for Will Smith. COVID's got new variants, JN.1, EG.5. COVID's getting firmware updates out here. It's pretty crazy. Who does those updates? The father time, the mother nature, brother Russia. That's what we got here. 
to social media. Social media has made people so weird. I saw somebody on Facebook the other day selling underwear like new. <laughs> no such thing. Underwear are new or used, new or pre-owned. Don't try to game stop me. I lose half the value as soon as someone sits in it, just like a car. <laughs> I was messing with them, I asked them if they would like to trade for my like new toothbrush. I'll even throw in a gently used condom. <laughs> Speaking of gently used condoms, Vince McMahon made the news. <laughs> the man's never had a gently used condom in his life, apparently. Anybody read those texts? Any wrestling fans in here? Yeah. Woo! You read those texts? That's graphic. Did you read them in Vince McMahon's voice? Do you ever see people on Facebook bragging about how good their business is doing? People that owe you money? <laughs> How's that work? Talking about God is good. No, you are good at being a liar. <laughs> Give me my $20. Shit like that's why I got trust issues. I can't trust anyone out here. Someone. Someone filed a lawsuit against veggie straws, veggie straws because there were no vegetables in veggie straws. And I get it, I understand it. For like a month I relied on veggie straws as my nutritional intake. I went to find out that there are no nutrition, there's literally, they didn't even put the powdered vitamins in veggie straws. Not even the powdered vitamins. Can't trust, can't trust anybody, FDA, food companies. Can't trust doctors. I'm not gonna say I don't trust all doctors, but I definitely don't trust a lot of them. Gastro, uh, gastro doctors, proctologists, any doctor that went to school 12 years studying buttholes, I do not trust like it. I don't, I don't feel like that's a, a career that someone had a passion to follow, hopefully not at least. Hopefully not at least. Um, one more minute? Yeah, that's 20 seconds. 20 seconds? Oh! Oh, uh, what I got? Anything to finish off in a quick 20? God damn. Uh, time? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Lipper, everybody, giving over to Chris Lipper. Richard Comedy's only Holocaust denier. The Armenian Holocaust. He denies the whole Armenian Holocaust. Sorry, I should have made that clear. All right. We're going to keep this thing moving. Your next comic is a dynamic performer. This guy's actually good. You guys are getting the treat. You stay to the end. Everyone else you saw before this sucked ass, except Steve Barker. Sorry, that's not your boy. No, Steve Barker is great. Steve Barker is clearly the best, but after that, everyone else here sucked dick and in a bad way. Like with teeth and stuff. And they wanted to kiss after. <laughs> Your next comic won't kiss no matter what. <laughs> Kylie Bauer. <laughs> Thank you. He's mocking you. He won't really do it. What the hell's up, oh, sweet oh? People, you lovely people! <laughs> Hell yeah, freak yeah, fuck yeah! Home sweet home, I'm a little bit of a philosopher! I'm a little bit of a philosopher with my comedy. I like to ask philosophical questions. Do sperm banks give no nut November bonuses? A little bit of a philosopher. Do sperm banks give no nut November bonuses? Like if you come in on December 1st, you haven't come all November, do they give you more money? <laughs> Is it based on like the viscosity? Or is it genetics? I don't know. I'm a little bit of a philosopher. There's no answers to philosophy. <laughs> Here's a philosophical question for you. Imagine if vampires were gay. <laughs> They'd be like, I want to suck your cock. <laughs> a lot of vampires died in the 90s. Guys! 
little bit of a philosopher. Home sweet home, are we aware of the Mandela effect? Do y'all know what the Mandela effect is? Yeah. Yeah, if you don't know, it's a psychological phenomenon. It uh, originated because a lot of people think that Nelson Mandela died in the 90s when he actually died in the 2000s. So people thinking that they remember shit wrong means they're in a different timeline or something. Like it's not just a bunch of fucking stoners smoking weed and being like, no, it was the Bernstein Bears, not the Bernstein Bears. <laughs> I think the only real Mandela effect that's provable that you can prove with evidence and scientific method is, uh, you know like when the Super Bowl happens, they make merch for both teams and then whatever team loses, Supposedly, they just send the losing team's merch to like a third world country. Do they actually do that? I don't know. If they do though, <laughs> it's, that's the only real Mandela effect. It's a bunch of kids in a third world village thinking that the Eagles won last year. They're living in a false reality, old sweet home. Most of Kenya still thinks that the Buffalo Bills killed it in the 90s. <laughs> Thank you, a little bit of a philosopher. Free Palestine! Free Palestine, free Palestine, all right. Israel saw free Palestine, they're like, free? Ooh, don't mind if I do. You think it's free? Okay. <laughs> uh, all's fair in love and war, all right? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, I always was told growing up that apparently I have like two great, 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 great uncles that were in the Civil War and they were brothers, but apparently they were on different sides of the Civil War. One was Union, one was Confederate. That's wild. Imagine being on the battlefield with your brother, just giving each other nookies and Indian sunburns, being like, say uncle! Is that the Battle of the Bulge? Like, say uncle! I imagine that the Thanksgivings after the war, though, had to be awkward. <laughs> be like, oh, hey, brother, how's it going? Where's your slaves? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Should have fought harder at Gettysburg, I guess. <laughs> Anybody with dead dads in the house? Any dead dads in here? Yeah. All right, sir, how did your, how did your dad die? Heart attack. Heart attack. Classic. My dad died cooler than your dad, I'll say that though. I have a dead dad, he died way cooler than your dad, sir. Heart attack's easy. My dad died by killing himself by jumping in front of a truck on the highway. It's pretty badass, pretty heroic. Just imagine you're standing on the side of the highway looking at the cars going by, you're like, you see a truck coming, you're like, I'll get the next one. That truck's not right. The wind's too wrong. Um, it's okay though, my dad's in heaven, guys. My dad's in heaven. Just kidding, he's in hell, he killed himself. Love you, dad. He's doing good there though. Uh, he directed that little Nos X music video, that was him. He's lit! On fire for eternity. Real quick though, uh, I think Chris Lippa, he brought up Vince McMahon, that shit's wild. We heard about the Vince McMahon stuff. He pooped on a lady, among other things. He pooped on a lady during a threesome. Crazy. He must have had a royal rumble in his stomach. Ha! All right, I've been Tyler Barry. Y'all been a lovely crowd. Bring up your host, Katie McFadden. See you, Lynn the rest of the show. Sure, you love it. Goodbye. Pete McMahon had a royal rumble in his stomach. The most disgusting part of that joke is it implies he threw 64 other nuggets out on top of her. God damn it. That's a great wrestling joke, everybody. Uh, all right, your next comedian, we're getting down to the final couple comedians on the set list tonight. We got a couple good ones left, uh, but not your next comedian. Your next comedian, did you guys know that Ben Shapiro has the number one rap song right now in America? On iTunes. I only know that because you're your next comedian. 
Your next comedian made it clear to me that Ben Shapiro is the number one rap song in America on iTunes. Which tells me two things. Your next comedian loves Ben Shapiro, and even worse, he pays for music. Put your hands together for a modern monster, Jack Parker. Jacob, everybody, or Joel, who cares? How you guys doing tonight? You guys good? Where are you guys from? Wales. Wales. I, you didn't say enough for me to know if you're fucking with me or not. Because I... Here's the thing. Even with a Welsh accent, Wales is real easy to get fucking... I'm pretty sure that's the only word someone who's Welsh could get right with a Wales accent. Say, so, do, you, do you know the American Pledge of Allegiance? Nope. Nope? Okay. Well, alright, I'm gonna fail on this. Alright, fuck a sheep right now. It's the only thing I know about them. You don't know what the fuck they're saying and their dicks are in sheep, buddy. I need to see it on one end or the other. Okay. Uh, I am a local to Richmond, so you guys know what that means. I'm dating a bisexual nurse. One of the three options you get. You can have a bisexual nurse, a bisexual witch, or a bisexual bartender. You want to know which one's a pothead? That Venn diagram is a circle. Uh, it is a new relationship. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm not particularly good at it. Um, for the first time, uh, like, we went out, she got drunk, I didn't. Uh, she met some friends of mine, and uh, she wanted to talk about what she did while drunk around my friends, and I went, we don't need to do this, because I want to explain to you why I don't address everything you do that annoys me. Uh, and the main issue, of course, is time. Um, but uh, she said, to, she said, so uh, I know, like, I was a little insane, but as we, were la as we were going, I said, just so you guys know, Jack's getting late tonight. <laughs> so I went, and she said, did that bother you? And I went, yes, but not for the reasons you think. Uh, my friends like you, you're beautiful, you're charismatic, you're very funny. I know they like you. I don't want them to imagine you having sex with me and feeling bad for you. <laughs> you, can, you have to understand this, you're attracted to me, all right? This is the equivalent of meeting like an adorable, like, Siamese cat that's super sweet and friendly, and then it going around back to where you know it's just gonna get plowed by the barnyard hog. <laughs> Enjoy that image, Grace. Uh, I like mine too! I like her! That's the problem. Uh, I, uh, I do notice that when I'm in a relationship, I do get hit on a lot more by other women. It confused me for a period of time, and then I realized it's one of two things. It's uh, other women who are getting near us to make sure she's not being held against her will, and women who assume she's with me for money. Uh, both of which, not true. All right. I, uh, I am noticing that I get a lot less tolerant as I get older, and not for, like, uh, actual, like, things that the people are normally intolerant about, like, uh, I don't respect people who sneeze more than once in a minute. <laughs> like, at all. I think you get one sneeze, you wait a minute, if you really got to, you go again. You get it done in one. I'm a particularly loud sneezer, but I only sneeze once a day, and I get it done. You do have to be careful, alright, because I do a dad sneeze, it's real loud, it's basically just a... And you do run the risk of causing immediate ovulation of every woman who has daddy issues, and that's... <laughs> Alright, this side's really, di really digging it. The Some people realize they have daddy issues just now. Alright, uh, do I have anything that's remotely good? Um, I was doing a uh, dry January. Uh, I don't like it. I don't like it when my friends are actually, like, supportive of Dry January, uh, cause they get a little demeaning. Like, uh, you ever hang out at a friend's place and they know you're not drinking, and they want to talk around it instead of addressing it? Like, I had a buddy that was handing out drinks for his friends, he's like, yo, I got you a PBR, dude, I got you, uh, I got you a cider, oh, Jack, dude, 
I got you a nice non-alcoholic hard cider, and that's an insulting way to be handed a juice box. Uh, <laughs> little hurtful. All right, guys, that's all I want to work on. Please put your hands together for Jake McFadden. Jack Parker, everybody. I don't know if you guys saw Jack Parker give me the upward nod to say he saw my finger, but it looked like the same sign you used to get guys to come in and kidnap the Michigan governor. <laughs> All right. Uh, I sort of mumbled the last part of that joke. It's because I'm so perplexed. Your next comic is one of my favorite comics in the city, and I'm not saying that just because he's a big-time producer who can get me paid to do shows. Your next comic has a showcase show. This Friday, by the way, Monty, you're bummed. Uh, your next comic <laughs> has a showcase show. This Friday, at the only brewery in the city with a $10,000 virtual reality putting machine they turn into a stage. Okay. Uh, <laughs> are you guys done talking about it, or are you ready? Holy shit, Monty's still upset that I said Ben Shapiro was a rapper. Uh, Monty's half black, so he's really got a front when we talk about rap. Sorry. That only worked with Monty's actually black friends. Uh, Alright everybody, we're gonna keep this thing moving. Your next comment is the king of Detroit rap. Put your hands together for Carlton K. I have no idea what the fuck just happened right there. That was insanity. Holy shit. What's going on, everybody? Woo! I'm gonna throw some new stuff out, but I, uh, Jack mentioned dry January. Anybody else actually do that this year? Nobody? Good. Uh, I found out this year my wife hates dry January because uh, she told me I at least have to spit on it. So that's how that works. All right. Um, <laughs> Let's see, uh, I actually realized recently that uh, each of the women that I've been with in my life, uh, I attribute to some form of alcohol. Come on out, man. It's not a closet, but we support you. Uh, no, I've attributed all the women in my life to, to different kinds of alcohol. Uh, my first wife was kind of like White Claw in the sense that she was tiny and bubbly and all sorts of different women like to have them on her lips. Uh, oh my God. Ha, that's a lesbian joke. Um, Everybody that knows my first wife is downstairs. Now, um, <laughs> one girl I was really serious about, uh, these are all new, so I'm kind of having to look at this shit. One girl that I was really serious about uh, kind of reminded me of rum more than anything. I drank a lot with her, but uh, she reminded me of rum in the sense of like pirates and stuff, because she smelled a lot like fish. And, what was it? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh, there you go. She smelled a lot like fish, and she had a chest that just should have been buried somewhere. And uh, she was always trying to peg, like, I me. Mean, no, that's not right. How did I work that? Fuck it, I don't care. All right. Uh, my second wife, she was actually like Jaeger, in the sense that, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, she was very German, she was very harsh, and actually Jaegermeister means uh, master Hunter, uh, she was a master hunter of other people's dicks. So that was why that one didn't work. <laughs> really? I got an awe? I thought it was funny. All right, quiet. Uh, uh, another girl I was with was like beer. Uh, I'm not a big beer drinker, but I gave it a shot. Um, I found out, yeah, yeah, shut up, that wasn't even part of it. Uh, <laughs> let's see, all right, you know, fuck, I'm just gonna pick this up. Uh, she was bitter. Eh, that was one, all right. She was not very good with head. Uh, <laughs> I gotta word that one different, but I like that. Uh, her fucking feet were always ice cold. No? All right, fuck you guys. Uh, and when I'd go down on her, it was very yeasty and hoppy. Uh, <laughs> the current wife I've got is like whiskey, uh, in the sense that she's aged. She's gonna hate this if she ever hears this. Uh, she's aged, she's refined, she's kind of expensive and what I wouldn't give to put her in a fucking barrel. Um, <laughs> I think if I move on to another one, if I move on to a next one, it's gonna be tequila. No. Why did that part get last? No, um, because I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna start liking my women like tequila, uh, Mexican, no. and you know, <laughs> shut up. 
and with my worm in their bottom. Um, <laughs> fuck it, all right. That was the new stuff. Uh, I got some stuff I've done once before. Uh, how many people have heard like fast food chains, like drive through slogans, the things they say in the drive through Like everybody knows Chick-fil-A's, right? The, you order your food and they go, my pleasure. They say that all the places. Okay, everybody knows what I'm talking about. Has anybody noticed the new one from Burger King? When you go to Burger King, they all say you rule after they give you your total. Has anybody noticed that? Just me, I spent way too much time in fast food drive throughs uh, Some of the other places have started it as well and they're not doing so well with it. Uh, Arby's, they do a thing where they're like, you, you order your food or whatever and they say, come get this meat in your mouth. It's weird, <laughs> not really. They're trying, they're really trying. Uh, Jack in the Box is doing it too. Theirs is really simple, it's just come eat this box. It's weird, I don't understand that one, but it's a little aggressive, I think. Um, uh, let's see. Subway has tweaked it over the years since the whole Jared thing. And uh, the last one I heard, I heard one at one point was Subway, not recommended for children. Um, but they stopped that one and they went right into Subway. You know, it used to be Eat Fresh, now it's, we stopped fucking kids. So... Go get your foot long, guys. Uh, my name's Carlton Kay. Let's give it back to Jacob. Thanks for letting me on a quick hot spot tonight, Jacob. A uh, foot long is too big for kids. <laughs> I'm like Carlton Kay. I also like my women like tequila. Blanco. Nice. Such a layup joke. It's right there. It's so obvious. Uh, <laughs> Carlton's current wife does seem like the first lady in the bar to yell, fuck him up, baby. <laughs> and I respect that about her. Because Carlton's certainly not going to fuck anybody up. Uh, Alright. Just saying there. Uh, your next performer coming to the stage is your penultimate performer of the evening. You all know him as the voice of rap in the Richmond comedy community. He is the host of Basic City Comedy, the one and only host, the true king, if you will. Uh, put your hands together for the heart and the soul of Comedy RVA. It's Monty Giles! Uh, home sweet home, what's going on, y'all? Give it over Galt and K, everyone, he bumped me. He just wanted to feel like his wife's boyfriend on getting dibs. That's cool. Doesn't Carlton look like the recreation actor in Why Did I Get Married? What the fuck is that? You've never seen that show. Alright, sick. Uh, I'm biracial, so feel bad for not laughing. Sir, did you know I'm biracial? I do. You do now, yeah, exactly. How dare you? Uh, being white and passing as black, it's weird, you know what I'm saying? Like, my room is Montgomery. I'm named after the capital of Alabama where my white family owned my black family. He mouthed the words along with me. That was wild. <laughs> Whoa. Are you God? <laughs> what the fuck? He's like, Jesus came back. He's an accountant now. Get used to it. No, but being biracial and passing as white is fun because, like, I didn't learn about racism immediately. I found it out through my dad, you know? <laughs> Like, he would take me to the grocery store, right? And I'd be acting up, and he would go to hit me. And then a white woman would come out of nowhere and be like, you can't hit a kid that's not yours. <laughs> and I was like, yo, racism is dope. <laughs> and then they called the cops, and I was like, all right, racism is not dope, shit. Here's my ride home. <laughs> I don't know, that's weird. I get, I get pissed off when I find out about new white people. I was on Wikipedia the other day, and I was like, what the fuck is a Chechnyan? <laughs> Ruined my whole fucking day, dude. That's the thing, my name's Monty, and these white people are tricky as shit. I feel like they made a country just for me. It's called Montenegro. I was like, all right, guys. Let's calm it the fuck down here. I don't know. Y'all ever seen the movie Precious? Yeah. yeah? You look like you assign, like, essays to write about Precious. <laughs> I feel like if you, write, if you watch Precious as a comedy, it's just a funnier movie. Just more enjoyable. And white people, if you haven't seen it, don't worry, y'all have white Precious. It's called Forrest Gump. 
It's the same exact storyline. Like, Forrest Gump takes all black people's accomplishments, like teaching Elvis how to dance, and Precious takes all the white people's accomplishments, like incest. Cool. And they all end the same way. Literally, they learn to read and then die of AIDS. That's how both movies end. You ever been given head, and you realize that the person you're giving head to is still watching Netflix? Yo. Yo. That used to bother me so much, but I felt a different fear. You ever been giving someone head and realize they're watching Netflix, and then you see on the TV that it says, are you still watching, and then they say yes? <laughs> Literally just the keep it on button. I'm like, dude, how do you even know where the remote was? I think Mount Rushmore deserves to get nuked. I don't think there's any reason for Mount Rushmore. It's the least sexiest thing about America. All those, like, all those presidents look so bitchy next to each other. They don't even look like they want to hang out together, you know what I'm saying? And it's only a matter of time before they realize that during February they can put up in blackface. Oh, no. Yeah, that's, the, that's what the election's about in 2024. <laughs> that's on the ticket. If I had it up to me, my Mount Rushmore would be Harriet Tubman, you know, civil rights activist, then Guy Fieri, <laughs> activist, then it would be Dave Chappelle and Rick James. As Rick James. And then it would be JFK with his head blown off. You just use dynamite on Teddy Roosevelt's head. That's an easy thing to do. Has anyone ever uh, left a crying voicemail? <laughs> Has anyone ever gotten a crying voicemail? How long? You have? Was it someone begging for you to curve their grade? How long was it? Four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> Holy shit. I smoked cigarettes. I could not leave a four minute anything. Did you listen to the entire thing? Oh, God, brother. Was it all crying? Almost. Almost. <laughs> Dude, this guy makes Pippin look like sex trafficking. Nah, cause can, I, how does that work? Cause like you leave a voicemail of you crying, you know what I'm saying? Do you think she was on speakerphone? It was just right up here. And she was like, ah, what's your name? Steve. Steve, please. <laughs> Steve, come on. <laughs> and then they texted you and was like, hey, I left you a voicemail. You want to check that for me? Yeah. Wait, Steve, what do you do? I'm retired. Wait, how old was the girl who left you the voicemail? This was about 10 years ago, and she was about 50. Oh. She was about 50. How old are you? 16. Jeez. Wait, so you were 50 and she was 50? Why'd you, why'd you leave her? Uh, <laughs> oh, what a way to end the set, pal. <laughs> Hold on. Didn't leave her. You just made her cry all the time? Yeah. Kill yourself. It was a friend whose father died and called me crying about it. Oh shit. Alright, well, what was his name? Her name was Lisa. Alright, well, sorry for Lisa. Give it up for Steve, everyone. My name is Mimothy Giles. Thanks a lot, dude. <laughs> That's what we all thought was gonna happen. I was like, fuck. This is really gonna suck for the next guy. Uh, wow. By the way, I don't think you look like a college professor at all, Steve. You look like a guy who would come out of Publix and say, we might have some fresh cabbage in the back. Let me check. All right. Uh, your next comic is your uh, is is, is uh, the last comic scheduled for the evening? He is uh, a soldier. 
He's a veteran of this country's armed services. He was recently killed by an Iranian drone. Hell yeah! Okay, so show him some goddamn respect. Everybody, put your hands together. Recipient of three purple hearts. It's four. It's four, yeah. Yeah, he cut his hand opening a can earlier today. Everybody, put him as a can on base so he gets the medal. Everybody, put your hands together for the finest chef in the military. It's Chris Sipple. Thank you for your service. Uh, you guys don't do it, I guess. In Biden's America, I do get four purple hearts. All right, so everybody see that uh, Vince McMahon, the WWE owner, is in trouble? So if you don't know that he's in trouble, he got in trouble for having a three-way with a WWE employee and shitting on her. And he's also being sued for sharing that sex tape around. There you go. Uh, he's, he's in trouble for sharing that sex tape of her and pimping it out, or pimping her out to other people. But I feel like I could argue that suit a little bit because he's 70 something years old. He involuntarily probably, probably shit on somebody. And if you're the third party in that three-way, did you ask to be shit on? I, if I was that person, I would be directly just suing him for shitting on me alone. Uh, let's see. So, uh, any uh, NFL fans see the Detroit Lions lost? I feel like if they had uh, Michael Vick, they would have won because he still has that dog in him. Um, so, as a, as a kid, I was in a cult. Um, and I was the only one to survive this cult. I made it to 18, and uh, the cult was the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And then I had the decision in life, you know, I, I made it through that cult. The next cult, do I want to join Scientology or do I want to join the military? So I decided to join the army instead. Yeah, so I, I joined the military instead, and uh, I figured with that goal, you know, I didn't want to... I actually can't remember that deal. All right, so the Special Olympics, ESPN released last week, now you can bet on the Special Olympics. Anybody see that? No? So you can do uh, one leg. I don't remember that joke either. Oh. <laughs> Uh, we'll just go with this one. Um, so last year, people, uh, the submarine, the, uh, I don't even remember any of my jokes. Actually. Anybody remember the Target Stanley Cup, all the rage about the cup? I've never seen so many people uh, so rage about a cup unless it included two girls. Now I'm just waiting for uh, Target to release one jar, one, one jar, so I'm going to be the only guy that buys that. And uh, that's actually all I got early tonight. But, yeah, I'm gonna do my time there. Bye. 
Bye Bye Miss America. Give it up for your host, Jacob and Patty. That deserved more. In fairness to Avi, his dad just heard that song last week, so it's a fairly recent hit. Uh, hey, what happened? I disappeared for like a minute, and then Chris was done. Yeah. Did someone, uh, did, was Chris called back to active duty? What happened? He forgot his jokes. Ah, uh, all right. Uh, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna do a surprise fill-in, by the way. Your next comic, uh, what's supposed to be here tonight? Just sort of wandered in off the street, everybody. Put your hands together for Sammy Tamimi! Hey, give it up for Jacob, everybody. And for my brother, Avi, for singing. Hell yeah, baby. Yeah! Alright guys, this is the home stretch. Um, I want to tell you guys a little bit about myself. When I moved to this country, I thought that a dingleberry was an actual berry. Then I ate it. I have a lot of dingleberries, so you can tell by my beard. How are you? The other hairy guy in the room. Thank you for being here. I, uh, I'm Arab, you know, I don't like to talk about what's going on right now, but I will tell you this, man, as a comic, you know, you're either pro-Palestine or you want to get booked in comedy clubs, so, which is why I never get booked in comedy clubs. That's a good joke. Um, yeah, some of you are wondering why is the vape shop guy here? <laughs> you buy Viagra from the vape shop guy? Uh, mail order. Ma mail order? Mail, oh, you get the mail stuff. That's cool, that's cool. That's nice. Let's see, I wrote jokes here. I, hope, I wish I wrote jokes here. Yeah. I, uh, anybody here from like a small American town? No? Where are you from, Emily? Wow, okay. Damn, all right. I thought you were from Virginia or something. I, uh, to be honest, I'm not like a big fan of small towns. Uh, I showed up to this, uh, I was doing comedy in this small town called uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, right? I showed up at 9 o'clock, 9 p.m. Everything was closed. I went to bed and I woke up at 9 a.m. and everything was closed. So I just started fighting homeless people. Just to feel something. I got my ass beat every single time. That was fun. And uh, I was at a bar in New Hampshire, and uh, people were, uh, somebody actually asked me, like, uh, oh, uh, are you, are you pro-terrorism? Are you pro-terrorism? I was like, of course I'm pro-terrorism. Fuck, I fucked up that joke. I'm not pro-terrorism. Yeah, hey, you are. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you are. God damn. Oh, uh, man. Uh, do we have a... Thank you. Is it Khabib? <laughs> Minus the muscles. Um, I, uh, do, do we have any guys veterans here? Any veterans in the house? You guys don't allow them at home, sweet home? That's cool. Thanks, Jacob. I, uh, I have this buddy of mine. He's a veteran. You know, his name is John. And uh, John was deployed to Iraq. And I'm from Iraq. I'm an Iraqi comedian. If you think about it, there's not a lot of Iraqi comedians because uh, John shot them all. <laughs> That's okay, I shot all of his best friends. I, uh... <laughs> oh man, but uh, it's alright man, John is doing good. Uh, he's, uh, he's on government assistance, he's doing great. Man. <laughs> Last I saw John, he was trying to teach a six-year-old how to uh, use a breathalyzer. He's doing okay. But uh, John is the type of guy you go for advice, you know. When you talk to him, it's like talking to a human computer. John GBT. Yeah, I thought you would like that. You look like you're in IT. I, uh, but John and I, John's my best friend, you know. We like to drink, you know, get drunk. And play this really, like, fun American game called, uh, um, waterboarding. <laughs> That's where you get drunk and waterboard your best friend. We also like watching cat videos together. That's nice. What else? Uh, people say that, uh, here's the thing, man, uh, people say that Arabs are homophobic. 
But have you guys seen how like two Arab men greet each other? Like they kiss not once, not twice, but three times just to get a whiff of the guy's cologne. When a man sees a woman, we don't touch the woman, we don't hug the woman, we don't even acknowledge that she exists. That's pretty gay. Thank you. Oh man, my mom, uh, I love my mom, I haven't seen her in seven years. And uh, my mom, you know, we talk on the phone a lot and uh, she wants me to uh, marry a white girl because uh, she wants a blonde baby with blue eyes. I said, Mom, I have dark, curly hair in my asshole. How the fuck am I expected to produce a superior race child? I'm so glad you laughed and I'm so glad you laughed. IT and uh, heathen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your beautiful host, Jacob. Thank you so much. This was fun. He, he fought for his country, and you got to give it up for him for that. Ultimately lost, but he did fight. There's, a, there's an honor in that. Uh, all right. Hey, when you said you were staying the whole show, I didn't believe you. Yes. And I know you regret me, but I appreciate you staying the whole time. And just so you know, Steve, you burned through it. That's the last time they're coming out to see you do comedy. I'm well aware. They just got stuck here until 11.30 on a Tuesday, so you really... You know, make your friends trick them into it. Yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out. Uh, this week comedy for Home Street Home. We're here every first, third, and fifth Tuesday of the month. Make sure you come by in March for our special selection of guest hosts while I have a, hit a kid. Uh, not me personally, but uh, uh, yeah, my financial anchor. Uh, everybody, thank you very much. Good night. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.